I was around 15 years old and working as a babysitter for family friends, or anyone in my network who needed childcare services when they were heading out. Among all the families and kids I looked after, there are two incidents that left a lasting, albeit unsettling, impression. One of those times I was babysitting a couple of kids on a Saturday, the 26th of the month. Their parents were out for dinner with friends, and we found ourselves in the basement, engrossed in a game of destiny, enjoying fizzy drinks and snacks while waiting for their parents to return. The basement was almost like a small apartment, equipped with a bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, and even a supply closet with emergency supplies. The older sister, who was 11, started to worry when her younger brother didn't return after some time. She asked me to check on him while she stayed downstairs with her seven-year-old brother and his twin. As I cautiously made my way up the stairs, the lights upstairs suddenly went out, and the young boy came running down in tears, exclaiming, There's a man outside the house! I felt a shiver down my spine and rushed to the basement window to see two, maybe three figures approaching the house. I saw the kids on the couch, visibly shaken, with the parents' instruction that no one was supposed to visit while they were away, and the fact that the boy didn't recognize these men, I didn't want to take any chances. Everyone, get into the bedroom now, I instructed. They hurried into the bedroom while I turned off the TV and lights and grabbed a bag from the supply closet. I was out of breath as I rushed into the bedroom, securing the door with various items, and the four children huddled on the bed. I'm scared. One of the kids whimpered as I finished barricading the door and turned off the bedroom lights. I approached them with the bag and wrapped the top blanket around them. We could hear knocking from upstairs, followed by the sound of a window shattering. At that moment, I found it hard to breathe. While I had always imagined being in such a situation and staying composed, facing it for real was overwhelming. I emptied the bag as quietly as I could while the elder sister tried to soothe her brothers. Inside, there were a couple of candy bars and some water. Surprisingly, there was also a pocket knife and some bullets, though there was no firearm. Worried about the twins making noise, I covered their mouths as the basement door was kicked in, and they were on the verge of screaming. The sensation of water droplets on my hand from the twins' tears amplified my anxiety. My heart raced, and the ominous sounds from wherever those intruders were coming from only made it worse. I took the pocket knife and instructed the kids to hide under the bed. Honestly, I didn't know what else to do. My hands were trembling as I inched closer to the door with the blade in hand. I froze when I heard car doors opening and closing outside, followed by a scream. I darted back to the bed, slid under it, and covered the kids even more. We could hear whispers from outside the door, along with multiple footsteps entering the house and heading for the basement door. A loud crashing sound came from outside the bedroom door, accompanied by creaking noises, most likely from the stairs. Are you kids down there? I called out. Yes, they replied. The door to the bedroom slowly opened, revealing the kids' parents. I was immensely relieved that they had returned in the nick of time. Any longer, and I feared for the worst. They apologized for putting me in such a situation, handed me an additional dollar two hundred, and offered to drive me home. For some reason, they didn't contact the police, but that was their matter to deal with. I hadn't heard from them since. I hope they're safe, and I can still babysit their kids. Everything went smoothly until I babysat for another family a few blocks away from the previous one. This time, I was looking after triplets who were incredibly well-behaved and always followed my instructions, which was a relief given my past experiences. They were eight years old, soon to turn nine, and I'd practically watched them grow up. We were watching an anime show about mages and guilds when I heard a car pulling up outside the house. I initially thought it might be the parents returning, but it had only been a few minutes since they left, so that seemed unusual. When I went to check, I was petrified to see two figures heading towards the front door, and they knew we were inside. I hurriedly moved the kids upstairs, turned off the TV, and joined them in the parents' bedroom. It was the only room with a lock. I clutched my cell phone tightly in my right hand, 
ready to dial the police the moment I heard any noise from downstairs or the door being opened. I handed the phone to one of the triplets and instructed them to call the police, which they did. The police promised to arrive as soon as they could. Meanwhile, I texted the parents, urgently requesting them to come home. We could hear laughter and crashing noises from down the hall and outside the door. I held the three frightened kids close as the doorknob was fiddled with and then kicked in. That's when an overwhelming wave of fear washed over me. I thought I might die or worse, and I was equally concerned for the kids who were now crying softly, huddled against me. As I heard footsteps approaching the closet, luck was on our side once again, as the wailing sirens of police cars filled the air outside the house. The two intruders were apprehended after being forced into a police car. I learned their identities, and it still haunts me to this day. They were known as the Kitty Brothers, individuals who would stalk specific families and abduct children shortly after their parents left home. It was both fortunate and unfortunate that I happened to be at both houses when they struck. The family expressed their apologies, gave me an extra dollar 350, and offered a room for the night, which I gratefully accepted. The triplets ended up in the guest bed with me, as they were too frightened to sleep alone. And I didn't mind at all. If I hadn't been there during both break-ins, I couldn't even fathom what might have happened to those two families and their children. I continue to babysit to this day, but I always carry a pocket knife for safety, and I keep a gun in my backpack, securely away from the children. I also have the police on speed dial just in case. I'll never forget the two terrifying experiences I had while babysitting. One evening, I was babysitting a kid named Tom, and we decided to take a walk in the woods behind his house. He had a dog with us, and everything seemed fine at first. We were just enjoying the outdoors. But then his dog suddenly stopped dead in its tracks, ears perked up, and its paw was raised in the air. The dog started barking frantically, and its behavior raised a red flag for both of us. We were worried that it might be a black bear or some other wild animal. So I quickly told Tom to turn around, and we headed back to the house. It wasn't easy because the dog was pulling and going absolutely crazy. It was as if it had sensed something unusual. As we made our way back, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. When I glanced behind us beyond a large tree, I saw a guy just standing there, staring directly at me. It was a chilling sight. I yelled out to him, asking if he needed something. But instead of responding, he turned and walked away. It sent shivers down my spine, and I was genuinely freaked out. Eventually, the dog calmed down a bit, and we managed to make it back to the house. However, our relief was short-lived. Moments later, the dog started barking and pulling once again, as if something was still following us. I couldn't see what was behind us, but I feared it might be the same guy from before. I was tempted to let the dog loose on this person, but it didn't seem like a good idea. I decided not to look back for the rest of the way home, but the dog continued barking and tugging, making me anxious. Once we were back in the safety of the house, I carefully checked all the windows and doors. I made sure that no one had followed us. I was on high alert, and for about half an hour I remained vigilant, listening for any unusual sounds outside. Thinking it was safe, I suggested that we play Mario Kart with Tom to take our minds off the unnerving encounter. But our worst fear came true. Right outside the window in the patio, we heard a loud noise, like one of the toy buckets falling over. I immediately turned on the patio light and saw a green bucket filled with beach toys and balls that had been knocked over. It was clear that no small animal could have caused this. The dog started barking again. This time it's something outside. I told Tom to get me his dad's hunting rifle, even though it might have been an imprudent decision to ask an eight-year-old for a gun. But in the heat of the moment, I wasn't thinking rationally. Throughout the night, strange noises continued from outside the house. There were tapping sounds on the windows, chimes being pushed, 
and things falling over. I was on edge. Suddenly, I caught a glimpse of the guy through one of the windows. He was walking past until he noticed me and stopped. In an attempt to protect ourselves, I lifted the gun, signaling that we were armed. He didn't immediately run away, though. He crouched down, looking like some sort of creature, and his eyes locked onto mine. It was a bone-chilling stare. Eventually, he retreated into the woods, and I spent the rest of the night on high alert, jumping at every small noise. About a week later, I received a call from Mike's parents. They told me that a creepy-looking man had been lurking around their house from the woods. They asked me to describe the man, but I couldn't give a detailed description as I hadn't seen much of his face. However, I assured them it was the same man. They even pleaded with me to babysit on several occasions after that. But I respectfully declined every time. It's been a while, and I still have no idea what became of that family, or the man who had been stalking their house. Hello everyone! If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful or entertaining, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. Your support motivates us to create more content you'll love. Thanks a million! And if you've just subscribed, please drop a comment saying I subscribed. We'd love to welcome you to our community.